this year marks 20 years since China's accession to the World Trade Organization. What's your view in terms of China's role in the WTO? How has China's accession to the WTO, you think, benefited both China as well as the global economy? Uh, open trade has uh, promoted not only economic growth, uh, uh, prosperity, but, uh, but the peace as well. So it has been a peace project as, as well. And, uh, and I think China made very critical decision in 1978 when it decided that, that China can be developed only uh, when it's uh, joining the, the global uh, economic and, and technological uh, systems. And, and if you compare what happened with, with uh, the Soviet Union and China since that, since 1978, I think you can easily recognize that this, uh, this Soviet model did not work. If you want to be developed in the, in the global, uh, on the global uh, economy, in the global economy today, you have to, be, you have to base your strategy on win-win uh, approach. And if you look at uh, what has happened since uh, China joined uh, WTO, it has been a great success story not only for, for China, but for the whole global community. Uh, economic growth uh, levels have been rather rather uh, good and actually uh, uh, poorer countries have been benefiting from that uh, m even more than uh, developed uh, countries. So I, I think there are good reasons to believe that this is the right path. Mr. Prime Minister, from a bird's eye view, we have seen global trade pretty much recovering since the second half of 2020. Right now, we have seen global merchandise trade pretty much surpassing pre-pandemic levels. That's despite supply chain shocks that we see around the world right now. That's despite the pandemic, of course, still raging around the world. What's your take on why we are seeing this robust trade recovery despite all the uncertainties that we see? Uh, for the first, I, I think it's very important to, to recognize that this is not only a uh, recovery from the COVID-19 uh, 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 challenges, but, but in the same time, uh, uh, spending is back. And, and after the financial crisis 2007-2008, uh, it took more or less uh, 10 years or, or even more than 10 years. Uh, uh, we were suffering from low level of uh, spending. Now, as I said, spending is back and we can see that in the, in the global trade. We have had uh, double digit growth this year. Next year is going to be good as well. But to be honest, we have a lot of challenges now. Uh, supply chain, uh, supply chain is restrictions. Uh, we have uh, energy, uh, energy prices and energy supply as well, uh, which is uh, challenging economies. Uh, and then these uh, geopolitical tensions as well. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about protectionist pressures. Uh, and and uh, I, I think that is going to make future predictions a bit uh, difficult. But uh, I'm optimistic that uh, on the longer term, uh, everyone is able to understand that global trade, open global trade, is uh, a real win-win opportunity for the world. Not only when looking at uh, economic perspectives and economic future, but also when looking at security challenges and, and also this major challenge we have with uh, environment. So open trade, uh, bilateral, uh, bilateral uh, and multilateral agreements are the, the only way to get rid of, uh, of uh, climate change. Uh, as, you, as you mentioned, uh, the present trend is, is uh, rather, rather positive and, uh, and there is growth uh, in, in trade between China and, uh, and the European Union. Um, I can see some concerns and, uh, and I, I think the problem is that um, uh, in spite of the fact that we want to have, uh, we want to unpoliticize uh, trade, uh, the fact is that uh, there are political aspects as well. And the question is how can we, how can we balance these political aspects in, the, in, a, in, in a reasonable way? Uh, I fully agree that, uh, that uh, the United States and, and China have to be able to, to find uh, uh, some kind of common ground for the, for the future. They are very much dependent on each other. And, uh, and, and that, that interdependency is uh, 
giving special reasons to find a compromise. I think it's uh, uh, in the in the interest of uh, China, especially, but also in the interest of the United States, to have some kind of some kind of uh, common common understanding about the future of the global trade. But the same with uh, Europe as well.